This video is about a Nazi. His name was Philip Leonard, and he won the fifth Nobel Prize in Physics in 1905 for his work on cathode rays. Now, I normally wouldn't make a video about a literal Nazi, but in the interest of faithfully recounting the story of every physics Nobel Prize, the show must go on. Starting in the late 1880s, Philip Leonard began experimenting with Crookes tubes, which are partially evacuated glass tubes with high voltage applied on either end. As a consequence of the high voltage, electrons, subatomic particles that typically hang out around atoms, were ripped off their atoms and flung across the length of the tube. At the time, they didn't know these were electrons. Instead, they were known as cathode rays, as they originated from the cathode, or the negative terminal, of the tube. The trouble is, cathode rays were stuck within the glass, which made them hard to experiment with. Leonard's biggest innovation in this regard is now called the Leonard window, which is a tiny piece of aluminum foil replacing a small part of the glass near the opposite end of the tube from the cathode. This thin piece of foil let the cathode rays escape the tube without disturbing the partial vacuum inside, allowing them to be studied in greater detail. And once they were out, all sorts of science could be done, and it was primarily for this innovation that he won the prize. But his work didn't stop there. Once the cathode rays were free, he was able to prove that they behaved the same way outside the tube as they did inside. They were capable of producing fluorescence and being bent by magnetic fields. Further, he was able to show that they are absorbed by different materials in a way that depended on the material's density, that they carried electricity with them, and that they aren't all the same. They can be deflected in different ways by electric and magnetic fields. All these features lent to the idea that cathode rays were not mere undulations in an underlying field like light was, but that they were genuinely particulate in nature. He later showed that when ultraviolet light is shown on metals, low-energy cathode rays were ejected. That is, he discovered the photoelectric effect. Ironically for a Nazi, this is precisely what Albert Einstein, who was famously Jewish, won his Nobel Prize for 17 years later. Now, to be charitable to Leonard, his ultra-nationalist Nazi ideology doesn't seem to have shown its ugly face until after he won his Nobel. In fact, in 1905, Leonard exchanged letters with Einstein, remarking to him about his theoretical explanation of the photoelectric effect that, quote, "...nothing can make me happier than a thinker of great depth and scope deriving some pleasure from my work." Einstein in turn referred to Leonard as a, quote, great master and genius. However, this pleasant relationship didn't last long, and even a few years later, Einstein wrote in a letter to a friend that, quote, his theories on the ether seem to me almost infantile, and some of his investigations border on the ludicrous. I am very sorry that you must waste your time with such stupidities. Leonard's turn to ultranationalism became apparent during World War I, and he eventually followed in the footsteps of the Nazis, disparaging the theoretical, mathematically driven physics of scientists like Einstein as Jewish physics. I suspect, though it's not proven, that his rise to power amongst German nationalists was one of the major contributing factors to the exile of many Jewish scientists prior to and during the Nazis' rise to power, which would ultimately contribute to the loss of the Second World War for both the Nazis and the Japanese imperialists. And good riddance. 